This is Erin McKenna. Listen as she shares her story with us this morning. Fools Peter 1, 18 and 19 states, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The gospel is this. Jesus came down and lived a perfect life in order to be a sacrifice. Crucified on the cross, he took on the debt of all sin so that anyone who accepts him and his sacrifice can be forgiven and reconciled to a holy father in heaven. Mm. I grew up in a stable home with a mom, dad, and older brother. Most Sunday mornings, my mom would take me and my brother to a church in Ankeny. I was involved in Awana and then began going to the church's youth group in sixth grade. Throughout my childhood and most of my teenage years, I called myself a Christian. During those times in my life, Christianity wasn't something I had to think about too much. My mom always said all our family was Christian. We went to church and believed in Jesus. That was all there was to it for me. I would often wish I didn't have to wake up to go to church on Sundays, and once there, would think about other things, distracting myself from the worship and teaching. During one-on-one faith conversations with my dad in my early teenage years, I also discovered that despite what my mom said, he was an atheist. As I mentioned before, I started youth group in sixth grade. From the beginning, it was about me and my social life, not God. That same year, I began experiencing anxiety, mainly about school, as I never had before. I dreaded going, desperately begging my mom to let me stay home. For several months, getting to school every day was a battle for me. I remember my mom writing verses for me to read on note cards. They gave me no peace. I felt no comfort from my false, shallow Christianity. I turned to distractions, mainly YouTube, social media, movies, music, and video games. Eventually, the anxiety faded as I sought temporary comfort in the act of fitting in with my peers. In Romans 12, 2, Paul instructs us to not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Mm. At this time in my life, all I wanted was to conform and not stand out. Through middle school and high school, I continued living in this way. But by my junior year, I wasn't living any further from God than I had before, but my outward actions and attitudes had gotten worse. I looked to my friends and social media for what music to listen to, how to talk, and what to think about social issues. In August, right before I started my senior year, I came across some verses on social media one of which was Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. I began to realize that going to church for an hour most Sundays and telling my friends I'm a Christian isn't what makes me a believer or saved. Luke 6, 46 similarly says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? In these verses, Jesus warns that there are religious readers who declare themselves as believers who he will reject on the day of judgment. I wondered what made me any different from these men Jesus spoke of. For the first time, I opened my Bible and started reading God's word, open to learning about who he really is and what it means to follow him. After a couple days of reading through Genesis, I watched a movie called American Gospel, Christ Alone. It is about the distortion of Christianity through American culture. Most importantly, it explained what the true biblical gospel is. I recognized how separated from God I had been all my life and my need for the Savior. In those few days, I understood and believed this. I am a broken sinner who falls short of the glory of God, saved from God's wrath by the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, justified and reconciled to my Father in heaven. That was my moment of salvation. During the following two years, my relationship with God grew as I began consistently spending time in Scripture and looking to Him for guidance. However, I struggled with getting out of my comfort zone to find a community of other Christians who were truly following Christ. This past winter, I began spending time at Grace. I was amazed at the genuine faith of the people who come here and how welcoming they were towards me. God has blessed me with so many brothers and sisters here who have helped me grow in my walk with Him tremendously. Through people here at Grace, I also learned about Emmaus Bible College, which I have decided to attend. I'm very excited to be going off in a few days and see how God walks through me there, leading me in paths of righteousness for his namesake.
It was great to hear your testimony again. I think that's my fourth time. <laughs> and um, I just praise the Lord for his work in your heart and life. I praise the Lord for your desire to be a member here at Grace. I praise the Lord that the Holy Spirit convicted your heart and you listened. I praise the Lord for the depth of the scripture in your heart and life. And I praise the Lord for like Colin and Teresa and other people's influence in your life. And I'm proud of you for following the Lord to Emmaus Bible College. It's such a privilege to send people into ministry. And it's a joy to do that here at Grace. I have one other question at which you've already testified. Are you 100% confident in the Lord Jesus Christ's work on the cross and you've received it? Yes. It is my privilege to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Amen.